Which takes us to, I guess, your final album, mm -hmm. the Rap God album. Right. 25 songs. Yeah. Is it really your last album? My last solo album. Really? Yeah, my last solo I, album. I I'm going to do that. joint. Because everybody has said they're done. How Jay-Z have a last right, right, solo exactly. album? Exactly. Seriously, the Black album was the supposed to be the last album. That came out like 15 years ago or something. Yeah, that it was my- like five albums my, since then. That was, my, that was my joint, man. It was too. Yeah, it was everyone's joint. Yeah. Because it was his last album. Yeah. That, How many that albums have come out since us. then? Yeah, that was, that was, that was tough. Uh, so like I said, I don't fully believe you, but but from your point of view, why is this your last album? Um, I've been one that, like, I think in like 2016, right after uh, Fire in the Church dropped, I had like named like my next four or five albums. And I was like, you know, my last one will be called The Rap God. So mm -hmm. it's been a vision for me. You know, like I was making this the conclusion, you know, always already in my head. It's not like something I came up with as soon as I started working on it. You know what I'm saying? So um, so I already had the title before I even had the titles of the albums that was in between there, like the Pray for the Devil, the Gun and Teacher's Death, all of that stuff. And um, and Rap God was originally supposed to drop in 2020, and that's when I was going to be done, you know. But the COVID happened, and then I'm facing jail time, stuff like that. Not wanting to be locked up while my album is dropping or, or out, and I can't reap the benefits of touring and doing shows off of it while the music is hot. Stuff what like happened that. in 2020? Um, COVID happened and we couldn't move well, around. Anyway, we were locked down. You were facing jail time. What, what yeah, happened with that? That was, um, I was driving through some little town called Eureka, and they was trying to give me oh, that's driving a, suspended. That's yeah, a yeah. suspended license. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, that stuff, it just was a, a big waste of time, you know, and it kind of pushed things back, but, you know, they say all things happen for a reason, so maybe that was supposed to happen for my stuff to be number one rap album on iTunes, you know? Right. So this album comes out independently uh -huh. and becomes a number one album mm -hmm. on iTunes. Mm -hmm. Where was it on Billboard? I'm not even sure. I'm okay. not even sure. But still, yeah. the number one album on yeah. iTunes, yeah, 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 completely yeah. independent, yeah. top to bottom. Yeah. You paid for the whole thing yeah. out of your own pocket, yeah. all the production. Video shoots. Studio video time, shoots, the, the mixing, mastering, yep, 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 all of the that. artwork. Yeah. Yep. All the stream money comes back to you yeah. uh, on all platforms. Yeah. Um, how did that feel to really put out an album like that? And let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was wondering this actually, like driving up here when I was listening to the album. When you, when an album was when they calculate how many quote unquote copies mm -hmm. the album sold based mm -hmm. on the streams, if you have more songs on there, does that automatically? Like increase the streams and the number of copies sold, or I'm not sure. Actually, I was thinking about see, that see too. Yeah, I was thinking about that too because I know it's usually like if somebody buys a single song, you know, if they was to buy just single songs, twenty five at all twenty five, it would be more than if they just bought the album as a whole. I would huh. make more money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was wondering how that worked too, because now when people do it and it comes to their phone, it's like, damn, what if I want to buy ten copies? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Do I need to go to ten different phones? It's like they got to go through ten different phones to do that. You know what I'm saying? And um, I know times is changing and stuff like that, so we try to stay up to date. But yeah, I don't really even know the answer to that question. Okay. And you know, when you called yourself Rap God, mm -hmm. you know, there was an interview you did with BET mm -hmm. where you said, uh, I felt like the only person messing with me in rap is Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. At a point in time. Okay. Not anymore? No, no, not anymore. Okay. You feel like you're better than Lil Wayne at this yeah. point? Yeah. As you should. Yeah. I, I felt like, um, I remember like 2007, I'm like, the only person that's better than me is Wayne. You know, and I was like, then I remember like in like 2013, I was like, okay, I feel like me and him are like neck and neck, you know? And then after I did like Holy Ghost, like Chirac and Holy Ghost, I was like, okay, that's what, this was when I felt like I'm, I'm, I'm rap God is nothing. I'm the most high. Yeah. Okay. Once the album came out, what was, you know, aside from going number one, you know, on iTunes, what was the overall effect of that album? Um, it was it different than like, the other like projects? Like afterwards, or are you talking about Well, the just, just the effect of, of dropping. Because, you know, I mean, you know what it's right. like to drop a big project and drop a project that people are kind of right, right. Kind of so with. Right, So to finally drop it felt like finally for me, too. Like, my fans was finally is here. You know, it's, please don't push it back, blah, 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 blah. You know, so it's finally for me, too. I, I couldn't wait to get this to y'all. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, satisfy y'all. Like, to be like, you know, I'm, it's out and I'm done with it. You know what I'm saying? So another feeling that I felt was like, you know how people say, uh, make it to the top? I'm trying to make it to the top, or I'm on top. It's like, we never really ask ourselves like, what is on top? Because what's on top to you might not be what's on top to the next person, you know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure when rappers rap about it, 
I'm on top. They're not talking about the top charts. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it was like I could actually sit back and say, like, wow, I really made it to the top in a sense. If that's, you know, the, the top number one, the top charts without selling my soul. You know what I'm saying? Like, signing my rights over. You know, so it's like, to say that, it's like, man, I don't personally know anybody else that can say that. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, so it just felt good and it felt like it was worth, you know, standing firm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it, it finally paid off almost. You know, for the sense, it was like for years, it's like, man, you made it number two at least. You know what I'm saying? One time, but that's great. That's a great accomplishment, but it's only so much you could do as an independent artist, Montana. You know what I'm saying? Like, you probably can't, you know, do that again. You know what I'm saying? Or you can't be surprised if you're not able to get up that high again. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, just to know that, you know, I'm doing this stuff all off my lyrics. Mm -hmm. Like, not because I'm in Louis and Gucci every time you see me. Hmm. Not because, you know, I got this beef going on with this dude over here. Not because I got this famous pop and dance going on right now. Not because... You know, I got such and such and such and such backing me and shouting me out and I be with them all the time on their page and blah, 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 blah. Like, or because, oh, I got this big homie that's like, it's like, it's like no, this is all my lyrics. You know what I'm saying? So to be able to stand firm and, and go number one off my lyrics and, you know, be relevant for this long off of what's coming out of my mouth and, and what's created in, in my brain. You know what I'm saying? And how I articulate myself and, you know, deliver it and stuff like that. It's like, man, it's it's kind of like, I just feel like I'm in a world of my own. Like, I often thank God a lot, like, for my brain and the way it works. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, when you say the word rap God, you know, the first thing that comes up is Eminem, mm -hmm. the song Rap mm -hmm. God in uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And people made that uh, connection? Yeah, a lot of times. You know, I, I have fans like, you ain't the rap God. This is the real rap God. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And, um... You know, certain people like that. And uh, one time I said, I was like, I listened to his Rap God song. And um, and I'm like, he he never said he was a Rap God in his song. He didn't say that? No, he never said he Hold was a Rap a God in his song. He said, I'm beginning to feel like I'm a Rap God. I'm the nigga okay. that he said he was starting to feel like. So if like, you listen, listen closely, that's what he says. You're right. I'm beginning to feel like a Rap God, Rap God. You're right. Yeah. So you said beginning to feel right because I'm beginning. Yeah, he actually says it twice. Yeah. No, wait, three times. Yep. No, it's, it's the chorus basically. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Aha. Okay. So he's just beginning to feel like a rap guy, but you feel right. like you're the actual rap guy. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I mean, the thing is about your projects is, is you know, you mentioned this. You don't have a bunch of big features, and mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, yeah. you're not. You don't have joint albums. No, no, no. You know, like I mean, I like Rich the Kid as a rapper. Mm -hmm. But it seems like every project is like like a compilation, damn mm -hmm. near. Like every song has like two or three because features. That's, because it's that's a lot of people lean on that, like, hey, yeah, bring your fan base in, bring your fan base in, bring your fan, you know what I'm saying? And you guys, I think it was Kodak, and I love him so much. I think he said, Yeah, hey, I did a I don't know if he was talking about Uzi or somebody, but he said something like he like, he said, I ain't even I ain't even like that song. I only did a, I only did a song with him because he said I don't even like his music. I only did a song with him because our labels made us do it. And I'm like, damn, he just said that. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you yeah. gotta respect somebody's truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you don't like it or, or or agree with it, it's like, man, they just showed you who they are. You know, and you could determine if you want to keep fucking with them after that mm -hmm. or go on about your business. You know what I'm saying? But you know, and it was just like, damn. So to say that, it's like that's the that's got to be the reality for a lot of other artists too. You know. And um, and that's funny because when I hear that, it made me think about the uh the pictures with Herb and uh Lil Uzi Vert had together, and it kind of looked like Herb was kind of like you know <laughs> like this all the time, like it was like like it's some weird vibes and shit. It was, it was just it was funny though. Hold but on, um, let me look up this picture that you're talking about right here. Uh, it's like three pictures or something. Like that. I don't know. They was out somewhere playing video games or something somewhere, but it looked like it was like some my label got your my label and your label and got together or something. I don't know if they're on the same label or what, but yeah, it was just funny. I remember everybody leaving comments about it and talking about it. Like he looked like he didn't want to be there. Montana three hundred, man. Listen, like what you've done, I think, is taken the hard road and the road less traveled mm -hmm. the whole time since Thanks. day one. You could have signed to the label. You could have gotten a feature from so and so. You could have gotten the cosign. You mm -hmm. could have played politics. You you could have done a whole lot of shit 
to to speed things up for you. Right. But you chose to stay independent, take the long road, take the slow road. And like I said in the beginning, you know, of our interview, like I I can relate to that situation. Right. You know what I mean? It may not look like, you know, you're the most popping dude or the richest dude, but once you pull back the covers and see what's really happening under the scenes, right. you know, you're the one that's actually winning. Exactly. You're the one that doesn't have a 360 deal. You you know, every stream goes back to you. You don't I don't have to work my way out of debt. You don't have to work your way out of, out of you know, a $500,000 advance. Yeah, no, I mean it's interesting because like like recently I, I was offered what was the equivalent of a publishing deal. Mm -hmm. You know, there's these companies that will basically pay you a certain amount of money for your YouTube revenue for a certain mm -hmm. number of years. Gotcha. Like a publishing deal. Right. And after going through this whole process for months, and finally getting this big multi, multi-million dollar offer, mm -hmm. we ran the numbers and we were like, nah, we don't need this money. Right. We're not going to give up. It was like, we had to give up like 25% mm. of the total money in order to take this upfront money. Right. And, and, and me and the guy that were working on it, he used to be the head of the biggest publishing house in the world. I'm not going to say who it is. But I asked him, I said, how many musical artists that you've worked with that have turned down publishing deals? Mm. He said zero. I not a, before, not a single, not a single one. Every time that a, the publishing deal, we start the process, a deal always gets worked out and they right. always sell their publishing. That's crazy because- You see what I'm saying? In 2015 or 16, I want to say 2015, I sat down with a dude and when I got in the car and left, he called my phone and said, hey dude, I just want to tell you, out of everybody I ever offered a deal, you're the only person that ever told me no. Mm -hmm. And I said, and he said, and I just want to let you know that my respect for you just grew 10 times. Yeah. Every artist, the biggest producers, the biggest rappers, whatever, they all do these publishing deals not realizing that you'd be better off not doing the publishing deal. Right. They're giving you these deals because they're going to make 25, 30, 40, 50% mm -hmm. off you. One of the deals I got offered... They just take 2% off the top just for themselves, just to do it, just to close right. the deal. Right, right. 2% uh -huh. of millions of dollars is mm -hmm. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But my point in saying all this is that instead of taking all these little upfront deals, doing all these little things that mm -hmm. ultimately put you in debt and ultimately hurt your money in the long run, you've chosen not to do any of that. You just sat there, put out your projects, mm -hmm. collected your money, mm -hmm. did your shows, you know, worked with your homies, mm -hmm. put out group projects, yeah. did, didn't did take the, what I call the payday loan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because ultimately that's really what it is. Right. A lot of times these labels give you payday loans right. that you got to pay back with all types of hidden costs. Yeah, yeah. And after, you know, because I mean, you've been, how long have you been rapping now? Like how many years technically? Like rapping, like knowing I could rap? Like 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 putting out projects. Oh, um, I put out my first mixtape in 2006, but I put out my first album in 2014. Okay, so, so 14, 22, so eight years. Mm -hmm. For eight years, you see what it's like by not taking the quick money, mm -hmm. by, by keeping your masters, mm -hmm. keeping your publishing, keeping your streams, mm -hmm. staying independent. And, and I bet you that you have way more money than a lot of these so-called popping rappers that people think are like rich as fuck. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got, um, this, is, this is something too, I got a lot of money that I haven't even touched yet, like just off my publishing from my writing, everything I've ever wrote, hmm. I've never touched that money. Like ever, everything I, I've, and then, and I've been having people reach out to me for years saying, hey man, you know, you got a, you know, you know, you got a lot of, and it's like, yeah, I know, like some, you know, and it's, and it's, I still got so much shit in my holster, and you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, but it's, it's, it's gonna be dope. I'm, I'm gonna get to it. I love to hear it, man. I love to hear it. I think you're sending a blueprint for, you know, generations to come right. in terms of what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I hope so, man. I think so. I think so. I truly believe so. Montana 300, man. Appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having Until me, Until next man. time. Love, Peace. Love, man.